Today we're going to show you acid rain. This used to be a huge environmental problem. We're going to demonstrate it to you in the lab. And we're going to do it with a piece of kit which I inherited from my late friend David Jones. We got the kit, but not the instructions. But Neil worked out how to use it. The problem of acid rain is that in the 1960s, 1970s, people were burning fuel, particularly coal, that contained a lot of sulphur. They were burning it in their homes, in power stations, and even at one time in trains, in railway locomotives. And when the sulphur-containing coal burns, it generates SO2, which is a gas, and sometimes SO3, which is a solid, but is generated as fine particles in the air. And then when it rains, these gas, SO2 and SO3, dissolve in the water to give either sulfurous or sulfuric acid. Acid rain has caused huge environmental problems, particularly killing forests because trees like pine trees and so on normally do not grow on very acid soil. And we're talking about really quite acidic rain. On the east coast of the United States, some of the acid rain had an acidity, a pH between that of lemon juice and battery acid. So the experiment consists of a large container in which you can burn sulfur to generate the SO2 or SO3. It then has a vessel on top in which you can put water in and the water is sprayed out of some glass arms so you get rain going into the gas. The problem is, of course, you can't see whether the water has become acidic if you just use plain water. So you have to put in an indicator. He added a tiny bit of potassium hydroxide, which made it nice blue color. And if it goes acidic, it should turn red. Run number one, Neil was and duly modest, put in just a little bit of sulphur. Wasn't enough. It rained, but no acid. So next time, Neil let himself go and put in a large amount of sulphur. It burnt well. In fact, it caused fog inside the container. That's rather interesting because when people burnt coal with sulphur in it, we used to get terrible smogs. People couldn't see their feet when they were bicycling because the smog was so thick. The experiment then worked really nicely. You could see the water going down, forming raindrops, and as the drops fell, they went from blue to red. Brady was quite courageous. He put his camera in the water.
You can see the raindrops coming down, and eventually it was drowned. But don't worry, it was okay. We really liked the demonstration. And I think the important thing to know about acid rain is that it was a huge environmental problem, but it is one which chemists and engineers have succeeded in more or less solving. Domestic fires, these are heating in houses, now uses coal, which has had the sulphur removed. And in large power stations, they take the flue gas that comes out of the boilers and desulfurize it, usually by reacting it with lime. The SO2 reacts with the lime to make calcium sulfate, which is innocuous. It can just be put to landfill. Nowadays, most power stations, certainly here in the UK, use natural gas, methane, rather than coal. So the amount of limestone that is being used for desulfurization is going down very substantially. But if you went out for a stroll in that romantic looking mist hanging over the trees round the lake, the chances are that you'd be breathing in a dilute form of sulfuric acid. Acid rain was not a big issue here in the UK because most of the SO2 was injected quite high in the atmosphere and blown over to mainland Europe, where there's much more forest than in the UK. Tall chimneys throw sulphur-laden exhaust high into the air. And it had really quite significant effects in the forests in Germany and northern Europe. It comes from both eastern and western Europe, but due to the prevailing winds, maybe around 50% comes from Great Britain. When I first came to Nottingham, on some days you could taste the SO2 in the air. The removal of the SO2 has had one quite strange effect, that Nottingham was famous for growing roses. And it turned out that the SO2 in the air was very good at killing the, some of the mildew and other pests that can grow on roses. So when the air was cleaned up, the roses started getting all of these pests. And now the rose growing industry around Nottingham has more or less disappeared. Would you like to learn more about raindrops? How about the shape of raindrops? Our sister channel, All About Physics, 60 Symbols, has you covered on that one. Also, thank you to everyone who supports periodic videos on Patreon. You can see those names on the screen at the moment. If you'd like to join them and pick your element, go to patreon.com slash periodic videos.